Well, good morning. It's Friday morning. It's uh, Dominic Steele here, and thanks for joining us uh, on Daily Bible Time this morning. Uh, look, um, we're talking these couple of days about, uh, well, we're going to get to Isaiah 6 on Monday, but I just was explaining yesterday that I've been reading this book, Christ and His People, on the book of Isaiah, and preparation for Isaiah 6. Uh, his first major chapter is on Isaiah 6, and uh, David Peterson uh, is all about how to preach the person of Christ from the book of Isaiah. And his opening chapter, though, is ways that we might um, understand the Old Testament as Christian believers. And uh, yesterday I gave you the seven different approaches from Sidney Gradanus. And today we're going to turn to Peterson's uh, summary of the work of Graham Goldsworthy. Now, Graham Goldsworthy, he's a Queensland theologian, but he actually did his major work at Moore Theological College in Sydney and really um, uh, has made such a significant impact uh, on the, the whole discipline of biblical theology and, and really impacted the way people around the world have understood how the whole Bible fits together. So I'm actually just going to read this half chapter from David Peterson straight to you this morning. Um, I found it such a helpful treatment and I don't think I can summarize it. So I'm just going to give you a couple of pages of Peterson's excellent summary of Goldsworthy's work. He says, Goldsworthy takes a redemptive historical approach to scripture like Gradanus, but argues more emphatically that all texts in the whole Bible bear a discernible relationship to Christ and are primarily intended as a testimony to Christ. Old Testament passages should not be applied simply and directly to New Testament believers. First, we must ask how the text applies to the person and work of Christ. Then we can begin to see how it applies to Christians through Christ or because of Christ. This is such an important point that it needs to be explained more fully. The interpreter must first understand how an Old Testament text functions in its literary and historical context, but it is also important to determine its context within salvation history. In other words, what is going on theologically at this point in the Bible story? The essential framework for establishing the structure and high points of salvation history is the gospel of Jesus and his apostles. The whole Bible must be understood in the light of God's final word in Jesus Christ, which explains everything that leads up to it. Goldsworthy speaks of different epochs in the progress of salvation history. Characters or institutions in the text need to be examined for their theological function in the epoch in which they belong before being related to Christ and his work. Goldsworthy describes these epochs in the following way. The first one, Genesis 4 to 11, it's the prologue to salvation history. Then there is the progressive revelation of salvation and the kingdom of God in the epoch from Abraham to David. Then in the epoch from Solomon to the end of the Old Testament, there's a progressive decline of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah under judgment. However, during this period, the prophets speak of the coming salvation and kingdom of God as a more glorious recapitulation of what has happened in the past history of Israel. And then in the New Testament epoch, Jesus Christ is declared to be the fulfiller of these expectations. He is the solid reality of which the history and prophetic expressions are the foreshadowing. Now, Goldsworthy expounds a typology based on the principle that people, events and institutions in the Old Testament correspond to and foreshadow other people, events or institutions that come later. The New Testament gives examples of such typology, encouraging us to look for more typological links when we're reach, reading the Old Testament. However, Goldsworthy also discerns in the Bible what he calls a macro typology that is far reaching in its application. There are correspondences between whole epochs of revelation. For idea, for example, 
the idea that God saves his people in order to rule over them and to make them a blessing to others, that's a common theme in each epoch of the whole Bible narrative. This is expressed in various ways in those epochs, culminating in the person and work of Christ. When we come to the application of an Old Testament test, the first point of contact with our contemporary situation is first and foremost the Lord Jesus Christ. So for example, passages about the role and significance of say the tabernacle or temple in the plan of God cannot be simply and directly applied to the church. Christ himself is preeminently the place to meet with God and to see his glory. See John 1, 14, John 2, 19 to 22. Jesus replaces the temple at Jerusalem as the source of life and renewal for the world. And he himself is the promised center of the ingathering of the nations. John 12, 32. Temple imagery can be applied to Christians only because they're joined to Christ by faith. We have been built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit poured out by Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 2, 19 to 22. Now, when David Peterson compares Gradanus and Goldsworthy, uh, he says, well, he urges people to read Goldsworthy for themselves, to compare the approach with that of Gradanus, and he says, I find myself very much influenced by the gospel-driven approach of Goldsworthy. This mirrors the apostolic preaching in Acts, which he briefly discusses, and the Christocentric use of the Old Testament everywhere or elsewhere in the New Testament. He says he particularly appreciates his insistence that the interpretation of an Old Testament text must proceed theologically via the application it has to Christ. He says Goldsworthy's insistence that the theme of the Bible as a whole is the kingdom of God assures me that when I'm reading about God fulfilling his purpose for Israel or Israelites being challenged to respond to such initiatives or judged for not responding, I'm in touch with kingdom structures of thought. There's ultimately an application to Christ and his people from all such passages. The gospel is the hermeneutical key to unlock the meaning of scripture as a whole. There you go. Well, that's um, David Peterson, Christ and his people in the book of Isaiah on his approach to interpreting an Old Testament text or his summary of really Graham Golds with his approach. Um, he says, the macro typology propounded by Golds with is particularly helpful. It reveals more clearly the underlying unity of scripture, the structure of redemptive history, the way all things are summed up in Christ as he tested the options suggested by Gradanus, he's found himself finally guided by the gospel-driven approach of Graham Goldsworthy. And uh, I just found that a really excellent summary of, um, well, it's David Peterson's approach, but I was taught by Graham Goldsworthy as well. And, uh, and it's the approach I've held for a long time in terms of how to understand and apply um, any Old Testament text. And so I just thought we'd pause in daily Bible time. I'd read you that and uh, we'll get back to Isaiah chapter 6 and that great summit of the whole book, or well, one of the summits in the whole book of Isaiah um, on Monday on daily Bible time. Thanks for joining us this morning. See you Monday. Oh, and mate, it'd be just terrific if you could join us for Village on Sunday. God bless.